Hey everyone, welcome back to Cooking with Cousin Ant. I am Cousin Ant, and today we are making something quick, uh, something very tasty, um, very flavorful, um, fried chicken. So here I have um, a pack of party wings that I got from the grocery store. Um, I pluck the feathers off, um, I always do that. Wash them in a combination of cold water, lime, and salt. Uh, let them sit, rinse them off, uh, multiple times till the water runs clear and then I pat them dry. Um, so here are my seasonings. I have some mustard. Uh, I always use mustard in my fried chicken. Um, I tend to use hot sauce as well. Um, trust me with the hot sauce. It's not overpowering. It gives it a nice subtle taste. Um, I have some thyme here. I don't know why I pulled it out, but I did. So I may use this, a sprinkle of it. I may not. Um, garlic salt, garlic powder parsley, onion powder, um, some lorry seasoned salt, any seasoned salt will do. Um, I'm not really too keen on seasoned all. I have used it in certain dishes, but um, I prefer seasoned salt. Uh, maybe because the seasoned all may be lower sodium or may have some other spices in there, why I'm not a fan of the flavor of it. Um, so I just stick to lorry seasoned salt. That's what my grandma uses, so I use that. Um, no salt Creole seasoning. I'm just putting this in there for a little bit of extra razzle dazzle some flavor um, Accent essentially MSG it essentially is something that I guess brings out the flavor Like I said, I do what my grandma does, but I add my own twist to it and some ground paprika So you may be wondering well and why are you using? Um, both garlic salt and garlic powder twofold reasons um, this season is salt It may not be as salty as I like it if I only use a little bit of it um, and I sometimes tend to under season. So like I said, I'm big on insurance, <laughs> insurance policies in the kitchen. So that's where the garlic salt comes in. Um, it gives me that garlic flavor um, from both of these, but I have the salt coming from the garlic salt. So if I under season it, the garlic salt will step in and remedy that issue. Um, but I usually don't have that issue anymore. Thankfully, I've outgrown that. So uh, practice makes perfect. <laughs> So I'm just going to eyeball it, start with a little garlic salt. Not a lot, because you see these wings are, these wings are really small. So you don't want to salt it as if you were making like bigger pieces of chicken, uh, such as like legs, chicken breasts, um, thighs or drumsticks. And I just eyeball, I do not measure. Um, I really, really have to thank my sister for getting me out of that because she, um, <laughs> She was on my head about it, like stop measuring. It, it's a lot easier. You're putting a lot of pressure on yourself. So now I just eyeball it. And a trick that I use when I eyeball it is if I can see the seasoning, that's how I know it's seasoned up uh, sufficiently. So if you can see it, if you can see it, you can eat it. So if you can see that seasoning, you know it's going to be flavorful and you will be able to eat it and not have to trash it. <laughs> so, you just wanna see everything. I just put a little bit of thyme in there um, and I can smell it and that's a good thing. So I'm just adding my seasoning salt. And did I put the parsley? No, I didn't put the parsley yet. So parsley to me doesn't do anything except gives good color. So that's why I use it. Uh, for the mustard, I don't add too much. Um, I just add enough to coat it. And hot sauce, I really don't even coat it in hot sauce because I'm not making hot wings, but um, I just, you know, put as much as I think um, I want. And that's it. So now I'm gonna go ahead, take my glove, put it on and mix it up. Um, and I've actually used ranch. So I've actually mixed hot sauce, mustard and ranch. Um, for my wings and it came out really good. It's important to pack your chicken dry after you clean it because you want those seasonings to stick. Um, that's the point of patting it dry and I use a glove um, just to really incorporate those seasonings in um, on each piece of chicken. Um, I know some people season up both sides of the chicken but this is how I've done it, my family's done it so I really do follow in their footsteps with most things um, cooking related. I don't deviate from the formula. So you see here, so we have all those seasonings, okay? So everything's on it. And I'm just gonna let these sit. Um, 
I'm not marinating them per se, but I just like to make sure they're up to room temperature because you do not want a cold piece of chicken in hot oil. So um, once I'm done, you know, letting them sit, um, I'm going to coat them in uh, flour and this little handy trick. Flour and cornstarch. Cornstarch will get your chicken very crispy. You don't need a lot. Um, like I say, I eyeball it, but it will get your chicken very crispy and crunchy. And um, yeah, so I'll show you the next step. So I'm back. Here I have a plastic grocery bag. And the reason I have it is because I'm going to put my flour and cornstarch mixture in, in here. And this is where I'm gonna coat my chicken. So I'm just eyeballing it. Um, any excess flour, it'll shake off. So don't panic if you put too much in the bag or if you put it on a plate, it'll come off. So here is, let me move this out the way, the flour and the cornstarch. I'm just gonna eye it. If I had to guess, it's probably about what, three, four tablespoons. I'm not sure. Um, let me get this cornstarch off of my hand. And the tip for flavorful skin, you have to season up your flour. Um, or if you choose to use flour and cornstarch or flour and cornstarch mixture, it's essential because flour is bland. So I don't, typically use everything that I put on the actual chicken. Um, and I actually forgot um, one seasoning. Um, I forgot black pepper, so I'm just gonna throw it on the chicken. Just a little bit, yeah, it's fine. It'll get shaken up anyway. Um, so I'm putting black pepper in there. I have some seasoned salt and I'm just gonna put some um, garlic powder and some onion powder and some paprika. Um, paprika doesn't do much for flavor, really ground paprika does nothing in my opinion, um, but it gives great color. So that is what it looks like on the inside. And I'm just gonna dump my chicken in there. Throw it on there. Um, and I have my oil heating on um, a low heat. Um, I have I have it on low heat just because I don't know when I'm actually gonna fry it. I'm probably distract it, uh, but it's vegetable oil. Um, but I usually cook my chicken on like a medium heat just because I don't want that skin to burn. Uh, and I just make sure my oil is hot before before I put my chicken in there because putting chicken in cold oil will leave you with soggy, soggy, and greasy chicken, and you don't want that. So. That is how it's looking. Um, so I'm gonna show you the next step. So I'm over at the stove. Um, I have some vegetable oil in this pot and that white substance floating is flour. The reason that is floating is because it's the, my, the way of testing, testing, excuse me, whether or not the oil is hot. So if you drop the oil and it just sits and it doesn't instantly sizzle, um, it's not ready yet. So I like to hear a sizzle and I like to see a bubble. So it's not ready yet. Um, I typically use canola oil for frying, but the grocery store I went to um, did not have any canola oil, hence vegetable oil. Um, I don't suggest using olive oil for frying any sort of meat, whether that be chicken, shrimp, fish. Um, I don't think I personally would be too keen on that flavor. Plus, um, you know, my, my family always told me that olive oil is fast burning, so it will basically burn the skin of your chicken. So with these party wings, um, how you'll know when they're done, how I know when they're done is they float to the top. So that's why I like deep frying chicken because you'll know it's done when it floats to the top and when you can um, actually not hear it like frying a lot, it kind of, I don't know for lack of a better term, <laughs> the oil starts whispering um, if that makes any sense. Um, and in worst case, you can always cut it open to see when it's done. Um, but deep frying really small pieces like this, I usually fry them for about 10 to 12 minutes. Uh, I always like to err on the side of caution when I am cooking any meat, just because I like all my meat well done. But obviously cook to your cooking style and your preference. And um, you can always cut open a piece of chicken and see if it's raw or not. So um, I won't bore you with the frying process. Um, I will just show you the finished product. All right, everyone, here's the finished product. Um, I made these in two batches just because I did not want the pan to be overcrowded. Um, I fried them for about, uh, say between 
10 to 12 minutes. I'm going to say more like 11 minutes. Um, and look at that Christmas. Look at that. Well, <laughs> I like this piece better. Uh, let's see this one. <laughs> look at this. So golden brown, that cornstarch, you hear it? Really crispy. And to go with this, um, I'm going to make spaghetti actually, but I may do a little, oops, sorry, my soap fell in the sink. <laughs> um, a little um, heyday throwback from my athletic days with these Kings of Wine sweet rolls. So thank you for watching. Please hit that notification bell and that subscribe button so that you can be notified of my next video upload. Ingredients will be in the description box down below and I will see you on the next video.